it's all right. We all felt sad. We all cried for a number of days, weeks, months, but it's going to pass. You're going to be all right. You're going to make it because life is not going to stop because you have a diagnosis of HIV. It's not going to stop. The world is not going to pick you up and say, oh, they're not going to do it. But you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this just like I did, just like Joy did. And take your time. And that's why we're doing this. So you don't have to go through what we went through. The women you are about to see in this video are strong, beautiful women. They are infected with HIV. The women have prepared this video to share their experiences with you. They want you to know that you have choices. You can be in control of your life. We hope you take the opportunity to watch this video whenever you need a word of encouragement or a friend. Like these women, you too can choose to live. Stephanie astounds me. I mean, she just, I, I watch her and I just marvel at how much she's had to endure and how strong she is. Um, I get a lot of strength from her. You can bring it off so we can see your pretty face. I think the big thing I remember about Tiny, she's got a great spirit of hospitality. I just can imagine a party that she would have or something, you know, it would be just so much fun. I just in the morning and say, I'm gorgeous and I'm out the door. I think I admire most in Heidi her persistence. I wasn't sick yet. Um, he put me on a couple of medicines because with AIDS, even though you're not sick, you have to take drugs to keep from getting sick. You guys might or may or may not have heard that. Always fighting. She, it always seems like she's fighting for the underdog. Now, it's like knowledge is power, and every time a, bit, a new drug comes out, I'm on the phone with my nurse. What's this new drug? You know, and I tell my peers, you know, knowledge is power, and the only way you're going to do well with this, this disease is to, to know. I'm not thankful for the disease. I'm thankful to be able to experience the things I've experienced, to meet the people that I've met, to grow in myself the way I have. I want kids, I want a husband, I want to be married when I'm through with college, or uh, I want to change my life to a different perspective. The doctor was talking about take your time. If you take your time and do it one day at a time, you'll find out that life can be better. Joy, I haven't gotten to know very well. Sometimes I think she feels very lost. I'm not sure where she fits into everything. but she's working on that. But I think it's kind of neat because we all seem to compliment each other. I mean, I don't know what they get from me, but you know, I, I hope that I give as much to our relationship as they've given to me. I love to just go out in the woods or out somewhere and go walking and just imagine uh, what it was like to live, I mean, I would have loved to live in the days of, like, either the Waltons or a Little House on the Prairie. I like to go to thrift shops a lot. I like to buy all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, the TV, get on the phone. My phone bill is tremendous. Last time we went and hiked, we went and hiked to the top of uh, Tom Sock Mountain. The highest elevation in Missouri, right? Saw the highest um, waterfall in Missouri. It was very cool. I'm an organization person, so you'll see me in my closet. I'm doing something. Or then I'll go to my kids, and then I'll just start all over. It's just, and I try to volunteer. I want to go to, like, Paris. I want to go to, like, um, I want to go to, like, different states and just see what it's like. And like my brother said, they got horses in Utah. I want to, like, ride the horses. I like bowling. <laughs> Don't find too many people that like bowling, but I have a bowling date on the 22nd. Um, I read. Spend time with my son. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm simple. Uh, my mother raised seven children by herself, 
and it was six girls, one boy. And my mother raised all the women in the house to be strong women because she is a strong woman. And, and she just raised us to, okay, this is your life. You have to deal with it and just go with it because that's how she was. So we learned from her. I was diagnosed in uh, May of 1986. I was diagnosed in November 17th in 1992. So in 90, I was diagnosed with AIDS. I was diagnosed in 87. But see, he gave me two months. I was diagnosed in 1990. Yeah, 1990. I was diagnosed March 22nd of 95. September the 18th. Um, I was diagnosed, and he, like the doctor was saying, you're HIV positive, and I was like, really? I spent about an hour at the doctor's office uh, talking to a counselor. I came home. I got as far as the, um, you know, the, the end of the carpet in the living room, the beginning of the tile in the kitchen. No one was home, so I fell on the floor and I cried for like three hours till I knew somebody was on their way home. And I cleaned myself up and went on for the next three months as if nothing happened. Yeah, you can work with this disease, but you have to wait and take a, a pace at everything that you have to do in life. You have to get yourself back on track and say, okay, take it one day at a time until I can get to the point where I can work. First thing you need to do is get some education. You know, and the more you educate about it, when you do go see the doctor, you'll be saying, now look, I heard about this, this, and this. I don't want to try this, you know? <laughs> and you can't do that if you don't have a clue. What were we talking about anyway? I just forgot. Should I know? Uh, Disclosure. <laughs> Disclosure. Yeah. As far as my family, they don't have a problem with me, but they don't want to talk about it, you know? Um, uh, they let me keep their kids. They never had made me have separate plates, you know, and they come over to eat and everything. One of my sisters used to stay with me, and then another sister and I used to live together. So they don't have a problem with it. They just don't want to have to talk about it. I jumped right into it. I told everybody and anybody and still will. That's me. I mean, I'm like that, and I've lost no friends and made no enemies. I was really afraid of anybody finding out. I mean, I had had friends whose families had walked out on them. I had had friends who's, who had lost their places to, of, of employment, their, their homes, because of HIV. I was terrified that that was going to happen to me. I called my brother one Sunday. It was June 4th, 1995. <laughs> That's the first person I told my, uh, my brother. And he came over. No one was at home again. He came over, and uh, we were watching Jurassic Park, and I told him, and, you know, he, he, he sat with me for about an hour, and we just talked, and, I mean, it was just, like, the biggest relief I had ever felt up to that point in my life, and um, he was also there when I told the rest of my family. He was my support. You know, I wish I could have went and popped a tape in and saw women like me sitting there talking about issues that it took me 10 plus years to get to, you know, to find out about. And then sometimes I, I, when I would go to support groups, I would hear people talking about things that for years I thought I was going nuts because, you know, I felt this way, but I didn't want to go tell anybody I felt these way. But I was at group one day, and, and one of the women said, you know, sometimes I feel blah, blah, blah. And I didn't say, me too, I just listened, you know? <laughs> and I realized that I wasn't crazy. Now, there were times when I would just say, I cannot take it, and have my little crying spells and my little temper tantrums and my depression. But that's all right. Mm -hmm. We all go through that. No, you're not crazy. No, it'll pass. It, it'll, it'll all pass after a while, you know, and it's all right to feel that way. But I, like I tell my kids, you can't stay there, you know. You have to deal with it, feel that way, and then life continues. There's nothing you can do about it. I remember when I first met you at clinic and you, we shared a cab oh. home together. Oh, neither God. one of us really knew each other's 
situation. Mm -hmm. We just started talking about, well, when I was diagnosed, and she goes, well, when I was diagnosed, and we just she started talking. She noticed that talking. cab driver's face in the mirror was looking at us like going, And did you notice my clenched world, fist waiting for him to say something ignorant? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. But then you. Um, I don't even remember how we met. Well, it was just clinic. And was it steps even? I don't think so. I think it was just a clinic. I think you were it was one of the clinic. first, probably the first person that I chose to even even meet and have anything to do with because you were the one of the sane ones that I saw around there. <laughs> really. And my sister and I thought you were so cool, well are and so strong. We learn from each other. Because yeah. I might be going through something that you already went through and you can help me out and I can you could be going through something that I've already went through and I can help you out. And that's what it's all about. You know, that's why we're called sisters, because we are sisters. One way or another, we're going to mm -hmm. wind up meeting each other and helping yeah. each other out. If you can find it in yourself to be strong enough to be happy, just go with it. You still got life. You still mm -hmm. got to live. It's something that's been handed to me in life. That's how mm -hmm. I've always thought about it. It's mm -hmm. just another situation right. that I've been, not by God, that's not yeah. my bag, yeah. but it's been given to me mm -hmm. to deal with. You know, I was just thinking, there are some days that I don't think about HIV. When I have really good days, I feel just normal. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, and, and, and it doesn't hit me again until, well, in those days, I usually don't take any medicine either. A drug <laughs> but, holiday? You know. <laughs> but uh, some days I do have just very good days. And then there are days, like you said, sometimes I have, sometimes I would just get tired of being sick and tired. One of the biggest dreams I had growing up was someday finding this Prince Charming and <laughs> Riding off into the sunset and having lots of babies and then having grandchildren. You know, I, I, I had the whole big dream. And then when I found out it was positive, back when I found out it was positive, they didn't have the success they had now with, mm. with treating babies and treating pregnant women. And, you know, and um, I think even knowing what they know now, I don't think I could do it. Uh, despite the, the good luck that they've had there with no positive babies, the transmission, Aaron was not one of those lucky babies. At four months, he was negative at birth. But then at four months, we found out that he was indeed uh, positive. Was, you can't say, well, don't have a baby, because next thing you know, they'll make all women who are positive get a, 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 a tube, tubal ligations. Mm -hmm. But you still have a choice. Mm -hmm. And I can't take your freedom of choice from right. you. I can only share with you the pros and cons about yeah, it. I like adopting kids. You know, people don't want them, I take them. All my mm -hmm. three, you know, they were abandoned by their mamas. They were mm -hmm. crack babies. Mm -hmm. And um, I took them in. Now when um, I get back on my feet, I, want, I would like to adopt AIDS babies because nobody wants them. I had a kid in 1987 and she's fine. Mm -hmm. And at the time we didn't worry, we, didn't, we even didn't get her tested. We mm -hmm. just thought everything was fine. Why worry if it's not gonna right. bother you anyway? And mm -hmm. then again, I got pregnant again in 1991 and this time something was wrong. Mm -hmm. I would do the same thing again even knowing what I do now just because I have my boy. Mm -hmm. I had a negative experience in while he was growing up, he was sick all the time and stuff, but the joy that he brings me every day when I go home or when he comes home from school, it's all mm -hmm. worth it. I don't just only want to have one, I want to adopt two because there are a lot of kids are in group homes that don't have babies, that don't have parents. I would not mind having children. I mean, that, that would be a decision for my husband to make. You know, if he wanted children, I'd give him children. But, I mean, me by myself, no. <laughs> not anymore. But uh, I wouldn't mind having other children, you know. What are some of your dreams for your kids? What do you want for your kids? You know, uh, what do you want them to be able to do, you know, should, should you go across the street and get hit by a car? I think that if you approach it in the right manner, it won't be so scary, you know, because it's not, yeah, we gonna die, everybody gonna die. <laughs> you know, I know people who have died before me who didn't even have HIV. Princess Diana blew my mind, oh, you know, because yeah. I just knew I'd be gone before her, mm -hmm. you know. Some people are already dead when they're doing a wheel or halfway dead, but I just, I'm thankful that I have time to think about it, to really think about it. Mm -hmm. Who would I want to take care of my kids, you know? 
And then I even have a chance. I talked to my in-laws because they're going to take the kids. And I said, okay, well, what if something happens to you all? What's going to happen to them? And so I put in my will that who the next set would be, you know, if something happened to the first people I chose. So I liked it because, you know, I can think about this. I can think about it. I can change it. I can uh, uh, make adjustments. And I think that it's important that everybody, uh, not just because you're HIV, everybody should have a will. I ran into a lot of girls that wouldn't do it because they felt that, you know, it's morbid. Mm -hmm. And like I told them, it's not. It's something has to be done because you can go across the street and get hit by your car. And then what's going to happen to your kids? Yeah. You're dead already. Mm -hmm. And they're out here. They're going to figure out who are going to get the kids, mm -hmm. who's going to get the house. I've been through that when my parents passed away. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think one thing that we should remember with these newly diagnosed women that are coming in, I know I felt this way anyway in the beginning, I don't want people coming at me throwing all these options right, telling me I right, need to do right. this and I need to do that. Right. You've got to remember Once. this, exactly. You can sit back and not think about any of it for a month mm -hmm. if you want, for six months. And I see, did. Yeah. And mm -hmm. be fine. Yeah. I mean, granted, when I got pregnant, on the way to the hospital during labor, I took my will up to have it notarized at my dad's business where he worked, you know, but that was just because in case I died, Aaron would go to the right people, you know, and now, even so, there's permanency planning for me and I don't have kids because mm -hmm. I don't want to be hooked up to any wires. And I I don't want to be kept alive artificially. Exactly. So I mean, but they still need to remember you have choices, and you yeah. do not have to be subject to all. You do not have to do right. any of this unless mm -hmm. you want. There will mm -hmm. come a time when you will probably want to. So I started making my funeral arrangements, and I got my will done, and my power of attorney done, and all that done in six months. Because I knew. And then when six months came, I thought, oh, this really sucks. <laughs> I'm still here. What do I do now? When you first find out that you're HIV positive, it's like, uh, it's a shock. Like I said, it was like somebody stabbing you in the heart. You're going to die. You're going to die. Um, after you do a little reading on, on it and, and you talk to a, a knowledgeable doctor about it, um, and of course you talk to your, your whoever you pray to, uh, you know, you sort of like come back down to earth and say, well, you know, this is something that I just have to deal with. It's like... You, 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 you got a, you, you've been diagnosed with uh, diabetes or this or that. It's just another disease, okay? It's, 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 it's not good, and it's, you know, it can be fatal, but let's not dwell on the fact that it's, it's such a, a, a fatalistic disease. You know? uh, let's dwell on the fact that we need to find out how to deal with it and, and get better and, and how, to, how, to, how to live with it. We don't let the disease control us. We control it. You know, that's the main thing. You can't let the sickness control you because if you do, you're going to die. I'm sorry to say it. You know, because you got this attitude, I got AIDS, I'm going to die. I got AIDS, I'm going to die. So you keep believing it, and then you're going to let everything go to the dogs. You know, you don't want to get up no more. You don't want to do nothing to you for yourself no more. And that's what happens. I don't let that control me. I know I'm sick. I know it. But I'm not going to let it control me. I, I still have a life. I got my kids. I got my own life. I like to go out shopping. I like to do all kinds of things. And I'm not going to let the sickness stop me. And that's how we deal with it. This is only the beginning. I mean, this is HIV positive. It's not even AIDS yet, probably, if you got it soon enough. I mean, this is, it, there's a long road ahead of you. If you can advocate for yourself and make it tolerable, you read, you know, go to any health department any aid service organization where you were tested, get literature, you know, you don't have to ask social workers for literature, you can go find it yourself. Dealing with AIDS, yes, yeah, it's hard, yes, yeah, it's rough, but my life is good, our life is good. You know, we go on vacations, we, we have a normal life. I know people who aren't dealing with AIDS whose life I wouldn't want. You know, so it's not that bad, you know, it could be worse. And my husband used to always say, even when he was at his sickest point, it's always somebody worse off than me. Well, my mom, she doesn't go around thinking, oh, I'm gonna die. She doesn't, she, you know, she's not that type of person, I, I don't believe I have this disease, you know? She just rolls with the punches. You know, my mom's strong. She's been dealing with this for 11 years, taking care of two kids at that. Uh, I, 
I feel like my mama could do anything. Anybody who could raise me could do anything. Yes, I want somebody to tell me, oh, you know, pat me on the shoulder, you poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> we know what you're going through, and I, that's what I needed then. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's, it's different. I don't need as much, oh, you poor thing, you know. I just say, hey, we're proud of you. you. You got two great children. You're doing this, doing that. You're still here 11 years later. Mm -hmm. You must be something doing, you must be doing something right. Mm -hmm. and, I feel, and I feel boosted mm -hmm. with that. Sometimes it gets kind of rough. And, you know, sometimes my son has caught me crying and wants to know why, and I... I just have to, you know, send him out, you know, take him, you know, to, to my mother's house or take him to wherever. Just, it's nothing for him to worry about. It's just something I got to finish going through. But that's what I do. I cry. Crying is healthy, I think. I do a lot of crying sometimes. I was like, why me? And I'm still like, well, why me? You know, and this God that everybody talks to, I look up and say, why me? You know, is it because I don't believe? <laughs> you know, I just, <laughs> that was a problem for a while. That bothered me. It doesn't so much anymore because um, I know now that it happens. I mean, it's out there. When my father passed away, he, he was positive. He passed away from AIDS. And I kept saying, I have to get tested. Not because of, you know, getting high or whatever. Me, I don't know how I got it. I got so many tattoos. It could be from the tattoos. It could be from surgery. Lord knows, I don't care. It's here. We're dealing mm -hmm. with it. So I used to have this little self-righteous little attitude because I was married. You know, I was <laughs> faithful. And it wasn't until years later, I just be uh, uh, in prayer. I was reading the word and praying. And, and, and God had to show me where I did blow it. You chose who you wanted. You know, you didn't want to wait on me. So, yeah, you are at fault. And that was a hard pill to swallow. You know, not not everybody is in that situation, you know. But I'm talking about Stephanie. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know for sure. And then it took me a while to really work through the issues because I was a Christian before I got diagnosed. And I had other Christians saying, Woo, you must have made God mad. And in my mind, I'm going, well, did I? What did I do? It's mothers. It's sons. It's daughters, it's grandchildren, it's grandparents, it's gay men, straight men, women. You can't look at somebody and say they are or they aren't. It's affected every population that I can think of. You know, it's, 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 it's not that foreign as a lot of people want to think it is. It's taught me how to accept other people. You know, I, I just wasn't a very nice person. And it's taught me compassion and uh, sensitivity towards other people and other people's problems. You know, because people definitely need support. I was always there to listen to people but and give them good advice, but never really, really cared about, well, you know, I was giving them the good advice, the right advice, but I really didn't care. You know, it was just, you know, words to me. But now I understand that people want you to care when you talk to them, when you listen to them. And people want you to show that you care by just being around, you know. It's, it's a very teaching experience. <laughs> you know, any time that you're afflicted with something, it makes you stronger or it kills you. You know, it's, it's one or the other. And it's made us stronger um, in a lot of different ways. You know, it's made our love for each other stronger. We care for each other more. It's made our love for the Lord stronger, our love for the kids stronger, um, because we've decided that that's the way we're going to go. Um, this is not going to... This is not going to beat us. I would like to see my kids grow up and see my grandkids. That's what my that's what I see as my mm -hmm. future. My my daughter would have kids. I don't know about my son. Mm -hmm. You know, I I'm hoping he goes into priesthood. <laughs> I think it might it'll solve my problem just because of what situation he is in now. 
But that's what I think of. I'm going to see my parents die first mm. before me. Mm. I mean, it's, it's sad, but at the same time, that's my future. I'm going to see my grandkids. Your kids are young. Yeah. I remember when uh, uh, each milestone in their life brought me a little bit further. Like uh, when my daughter became a teenager. Yeah. You know, that was like a hurdle. Mm -hmm. And then my son recently became a teenager. Now my daughter's taking driver's ed and want me to take her out to drive. You know, and, and, and those things always seem to be like uh, something to bring you yeah, that you, much it further. It pushes you yeah. forward. Yeah, because, you know, in my mind, I thought I wouldn't see those things. You know, and now I find myself not even thinking about what I won't see. Yeah. You know, did you do that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do that too. I said, oh, well, I'm going to see, I've seen this, you know, I'm going to see mm -hmm. more. Yeah. I remember visiting Colorado and driving up in the mountains and seeing these cabins nestled, you know, in these hillsides and thinking, oh, wouldn't it be really cool to get one of those cabins, put in a stock of food, no TV, no phone. No, nah, I'd have to have a phone. But... You know, and just be there with my laptop and I could just like write to my heart's content and no disturbances. I mean, it'd be so wonderful and I'm going to actually get the chance to do that next year. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm really excited. Anybody can believe that they're going to die because they have AIDS. You have to believe that you're going to live. That's, you know, that's the most important thing. If you believe that you're going to live and you're going to go out there and grab this disease and shake it and tell them you're not going to kill me, you're going to live. I have HIV, but it doesn't have me, and it never will. I get to see the turn of the century. It doesn't mean any more time for me. I want to see the turn of the century. <laughs> 2001, whatever. Yeah. We need each other because I can learn from them and they can learn something from me too. That's why the clinic is called also Sisters of Struggles because we are sisters struggling together, but we're sisters no matter what.